Hi everyone, um, in this video I'm going to review for the midterm and there will be some application problems here um, dealing with percents that you should pay special attention to uh, such as sales tax problems and interest problems. This review can also be found in my lab and um, it is part of your homework so I strongly suggest you complete it. It's great practice for the midterm. You may also use a four function calculator on the midterm. Number one, it says express the graph shown in color using interval notation and then express the graph as an inequality involving x. So remember when we're dealing with inequalities, we're dealing with um, the symbols greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, when we have the greater or the less than symbols, we use parentheses when we're dealing with interval notation. So if it's greater or less, we use parentheses. And if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, we use brackets because bracket, brackets signify that you include that value, whereas greater and less than um, parentheses just mean that that's a starting point or an ending point, but we're not including those points. So here, if we look at the uh, number line, we have brackets starting with negative two. So in interval, interval notation, I would put a bracket and then a negative two, and then the graph is being shaded to the right. And remember that number lines go on forever towards positive infinity, and you have negative infinity to the left. So the solution is anything from negative two to positive infinity. And we always put parentheses around infinity because it's never ending. If I want to write this as an interval and, and as an inequality, using x as the variable, we would just say that x has to be greater than or equal to negative two. And again, I'm using greater than or equal to because I have a bracket at negative two. In number two, we're solving the equation for y. So I need to get y by itself. So to do that, I'm just going to subtract three x. That whole term needs to go to the right side. So I would be left with negative three x plus six. And you can't combine these terms because they're unlike terms. Another way you could write that is you could also have y equals six minus three x. Both are okay. And again, can't combine because they're not like terms. In number three, we wanna write the phrase as a variable expression and use x to represent the number. When we're dealing with the word quotient, it means divide. So it's the quotient of five and a number. That just means five divided by x, which you can also write as a fraction, because remember, fractions are just division problems. So five and then fraction bar x. For number four, we're finding the area of the rectangle. Um, and I will be providing a formula sheet for you all uh, to use on the midterm. So you don't have to remember formulas. But to find the area of a rectangle, it's just length times width, L times W. So here we have 37 times x minus 2. And to simplify that, I would want to distribute the 37. So 37 times x gives me 37x, and 37 times negative 2 is negative 74. So the area is 37x minus 74, and area is always squared units. So we would just say this is sq for square, and here it's labeled in kilometers, so square kilometers, which also, by the way, you can write um, kilometers with an exponent of two. Um, and number five, translate again to an algebraic expression. So when, we're, when we have twice a number, that would be two times x. We don't know what the number is, that's our x. And then it says decreased, that means subtract and then decrease by four, so minus four. Okay, and this says do not simplify, so we would just leave like that. 
Again, number six, we're also um, translating and using x as the unknown number. And this time it says write the statement below as an equation. So equations, remember, it must have an equal sign. This is three times a number. So three times a number minus six is equal to, so we're gonna put an equal sign, two times the number, which is also twice a number, plus nine. So this is letter C. Okay, and then we are also solving for x. So to so solve for x, I need to get x on one side. So I'm going to subtract 2x and move it with the 3x. And 2x minus 2x is 0, so that just goes away. 3x minus 2x leaves you with 1x. I'm going to bring down the negative 6, bring down the 9. And now I need to combine the negative 6 and the 9. So to do that, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And 9 plus 6 is 15. In number 7, it says add or subtract as indicated. So here we're subtracting a whole number minus a fraction. Remember, you can only subtract fractions and add fractions when the denominators are like denominators. So here my denominator is a 1. So to simply make them the same denominator, I'm just going to take the opposite denominator. So here the denominator of 3 is 1, so I'm going to go to the other fraction, um, the denominator 7, and I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 7 over 7. And then I don't need to multiply y over 7 by anything because I would just be multiplying it by 1 over 1, which is not going to change anything. So to multiply fractions, you just go straight across. 3 times 7 gives us 21. And 1 times 7 is 7. And 27 divided by 7 is 3, so they're just equivalent fractions. And then minus y over 7. And because they have the same denominator, we can just combine the numerators and make it 21 minus y all over 7. So either of these would be um, acceptable for your answer. In number eight, they tell us that the radius of a circle is one half of its diameter. Okay, so in this um, sketch, the diameter is just a segment that passes through the center from one side of the circle to the other. And then the radius is half of that. So let's say my diameter was um, 20 inches. Okay, the radius would be half of 20. So the radius from here to here would just be half of 20 or 10 inches. Okay, for example. So here it says, if the diameter of a circle is 5 eighths of an inch, what is its radius? So this whole diameter is 5 eighths. So to find the radius, my radius is half the diameter. I'm going to take 1 half times 5 eighths. And to multiply fractions again, just go straight across. 1 times 5 is 5 and 2 times 8 is 16. So the radius would be 5 16 inches. Okay, in number 9, we've got a woman earns $3,000 per month and budgets $480 per month. What percent of her monthly income is spent on food? So we know that she's spending $480 per month on food, and she earns $3,000 per month. So the amount of money she spends on food is a fraction of what she, she earns each month. So if I want to find what percent of her monthly income is spent on food, we know that we have $480 spent on food out of the $3,000 she makes each month. Okay, And we're looking for a percentage. So all we would need to do here is to change a fraction to a percent, just divide, and then move your decimal two places to the right. So I'm going to pull up Desmos, but again, you're welcome to use just any four function calculator. And I've got three, 480 divided by 3,000. So I get 0.16, which is not your answer. I need to convert that to a percentage. So remember, you're just going to move the decimal two places to the right and add the percent symbol back. So 16% of her monthly income is spent on food. 
Okay, number 10 says represent the given quantity as an integer. Remember your integers are just your signed whole numbers. So negatives, zero, and positives. No fractions, no decimals. The average depth of a certain ocean is 12,241 feet below the surface of the ocean. So since we're dealing with below the surface of the ocean, the surface of the ocean would be considered zero. And if the depth is 12,241 feet below, that would mean that that's a negative depth. So to represent that as an integer, it would be negative 12,241. In number 11, it says the trail is 3,200 miles long and it begins in city A and ends in city B. Manfred has hiked three eighths of the trail before. How many miles has he hiked? So remember the word of just means to multiply. So we're just going to multiply 3 eighths times the total length of the trail. 3 eighths times 3200. So I'm going to put a 1 under here. And again, to multiply fractions, just go straight across. So if you multiply 3 times 3200, you get 9600. And 8 times 1 is 8. And now all you need to do is just divide 9,600 divided by 8. And that gives you 1,200. So he has hiked 1,200 miles. In number 12, it says use the associative property to rewrite the following expression. So remember, associative deals with grouping, um, and the order in a group doesn't matter. So... Um, all I'm going to do is take those terms, 4 plus A plus B, and instead of putting the parentheses around an A and B, I'm going to shift it down and put it around the 4 and the A. Okay, that would be the associative property. So notice they're in the same order, 4AB, 4AB. It's just that instead of grouping A and B together, we group the other two together, the 4 and the A. Number 13, a football team lost seven yards on each of two consecutive plays. Okay, consecutive means just one after the other. Represent the total change as a product of signed numbers and then find the total loss. So if they lost seven yards on two plays, right, that's two times losing is negative, two times negative seven. So that would just be letter A. And that would be... Um, 2 times negative 7, which is negative 14. And remember, when you have a negative times a negative, it's a positive. Same thing with a positive times a positive. But anytime the signs are different, positive times negative or negative times positive, you get a negative for your answer. So like signs give you a positive answer. And unlike signs give you a negative answer. Okay. Number 14 is dealing with the perimeter of a geometric figure. And it says it's the sum of the lengths of its sides. So the perimeter of this pentagon or five-sided figure is 35 centimeters. That means if you were to add up each of the sides, it would come out to 35. So the first part says write an equation for the perimeter. So I'm just going to take each of the sides. I'll start with this one and I'll go clockwise. So I'll start with x and then it's plus x plus another 2x plus 2x plus x. If I add all them, I should get 35. Okay, and if I look at my choices, the one that resembles this one the most would be letter A. Part B says solve. So to solve, I have all my x's on the same side, so I can just combine. If I add up 1x plus 1x plus 2x plus 2x plus 1x, I get 7x equals 35. And then to solve for x, I need to move that 7. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And 35 divided by 7 gives me 5. So now to find the length of the shorter sides, the shorter sides would be your x's. The longer sides are your 2 times your x's, right? Because they're twice as long. 
So the shorter sides would be all x, or 5. The longer sides would be 2 times x, or 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, and it's centimeters. The only time you're squaring is when you are dealing with area. So your answer would be in squared units, but perimeter, it's just linear units. It's regular centimeters or feet or inches or whatever. Okay, number 15 is one of those problems. It's a percent application problem, and it deals with um, sales tax. So um, a gold and diamond bracelet sells for $1,600. We want to find the sales tax and the total price if the sales tax rate is 4.5%. Okay, so... The formula for sales tax is just the tax rate times the purchase price. So if you think about if you go out and buy something and you want to figure out the sales tax, if you're buying something that's $1,600, that's the purchase price, and you want to figure out how much tax there's going to be, you would take the tax rate, but we would want to change this percentage to a decimal. So to change it to a decimal, we're going to drop the percent symbol and move it back two places to the left. You would have 0 0.045. And then I'm going to multiply that by the purchase price. So you take the purchase price and you multiply it by the percent as a decimal. And when you do that, you get $72. So that's the sales tax. Tax always gets added on. To, so to find the total price, we're going to take our purchase price and we're going to add the tax that we just found. So my purchase price again was $1,600 and I'm gonna add on $72. So my total price would be 1672. Um, number 16 is another area problem, area of a rectangle. So again, you're just going to be multiplying the length times the width. Um, here, what you can do, though, is you can take one-fifth and change it to a decimal. So to do that, it's a fraction. I want to change it to a decimal. All I have to do is divide. So one divided by five. Okay, so one-fifth is 0.2 as a decimal. Okay, so we just did 1 divided by 5, and we got 0.2. So now to get the area, remember, area of a rectangle is length times width. So I have my length, which is 0.62, times my width, which is 0.2. And if I multiply um, them together, I'm going to end up with, so 0.62 times 0.2. is 0.124. And it comes out to be, I'm going to move that right there. And since we're dealing with area, it would be yard squared. Again, you'll have a formula sheet for your um, formulas that you can use on the midterm. So you don't need to memorize formulas, but it is helpful to know how to find the area of a rectangle and also how to calculate sales tax and total price. Okay, number 17, I'm looking for the, um, to solve for X. So I need to get the X on one side. So to do that, I need to combine the 1.3 and the negative 15.7. I need to move the 1.3 away. So I'm going to subtract 1.3 because I was adding. So you do the opposite. And you get 3.4x equals um, negative 15.7 plus negative 1.3 comes out to negative 17. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3.14. The reason I'm dividing is because it's the inverse of multiplying. So they're going to cancel. And you get x equals 5. And you can check here on your calculator. Negative 17 divided by 3.4. So it comes out to be negative 5.
Um, number 18, it says a 38 inch piece of steel is cut into three pieces so that the second piece is twice as long as the first piece. So if the first piece is X, the second piece is twice that, right? So two X. And then the third piece is three more inches than four times the length of the first piece. So my first piece again is X. So this one would be three plus four X. And it tells me that the total length is 38 inches. So I need to find the length of the three pieces. So I know that each of these little pieces add up to the bigger piece. So I'm gonna have X plus two X plus three plus four X equals 38. And then I'm gonna combine like terms. So I'm gonna combine my X's on one side. And when I add them, I get seven X. And then I have plus three equals 38. Okay, again, I'm just gonna solve for X. So I'm gonna move the three to the other side. 38 minus three is 35. And then I'm going to divide by 7, so x equals 5. So remember, x is your shorter piece. So we know that that's 5 um, inches long. Um, the length of the second piece is 2 times x, so 2 times 5, which is 10 inches. And then the third piece would be 3 plus 4 times 5, right? All we're doing is substituting 5 for x. And 4 times 5, I have to do that first. That's order of operations. 4 times 5, I have to multiply first. I get 20. And 3 plus 20 gives me 23 inches. Okay, number 19 is just like number 1, except this time, if you notice, you have two brackets here. So that means if I want to put the solution and interval notation, I'm going to use a bracket five and then a comma and then a nine with another bracket because this time there's a beginning and an end. And number one, remember, it continues on towards positive infinity. So all this is saying is if this was an in, in, uh, inequality, all the solutions for X would be between five and nine, including five and nine. So if I want to write this inequality now, I would need to say x has to be less than or equal to 9, okay, because here's x, it's the shaded part, right? It's got to be smaller than or equal to 9, but greater than or equal to 5. Another way you can write that is you could just say x has to be greater than or equal to 5 and x has to be less than or equal to 9. So either of those ways would work. In number 20, we're multiplying. It says 6y minus 2 squared. So remember, that just means 6y minus 2 times 6y minus 2. And we have a binomial. We've got two terms. Anytime you multiply two binomials together, you're going to FOIL. And FOIL just stands for first, outer, inner, last. So I'm going to multiply my first terms together, which would be 6y times 6y, which is 36y squared. And then I'm going to multiply my outer terms, 6y times negative 2 which would be negative 12y. And then my inner terms, negative two times six y, that's negative 12y. And negative two times negative two, which is positive four. So then we get 36y squared minus 24y plus four. Because remember I can combine those two like terms in the middle. For number 21, we're looking for the purchase purpose of it says for the purpose of purchasing new baseboard and carpet, complete parts A and B. Letter A, we have to find the area and the perimeter of the room. And letter B, we're identifying whether the baseboard has to do with area or perimeter, and the same with the carpet. So first, 
to find the area in the perimeter. We've done this before, right? Area of a rectangle is length times width. So you're just going to do 13.5 times 12. And when you do that, you end up with 162. And it's feet, so my answer will be feet squared. Perimeter, remember, is just the length around the figure. So both of these, um, since it's a rectangle, these two sides are equal to each other, and these two sides are equal to each other. So I'm just going to add 13.5 plus 13.5, and then plus 12 plus 12. Or you could use a formula, which is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Okay, and the reason we can use that is because there's two lengths. There's two 13.5s and there's two widths, right? 12, they're both 12. So you could do two times 13.5 plus two times 12. Or if you want, you could just add every side and you're gonna get the same answer. So if you do two times 13.5, that gives you 27 plus two times 12 is 24. And if you add 27 plus 24, you get 51. And perimeter is always linear units, regular units. So it's 51 feet. So the area is 162 feet squared and the perimeter is 51 feet. When you're looking at the baseboards, right? That's the boards that go around the bases. That would be the perimeter. And if I want to put a carpet in the room, that would be the area. So the baseboard has to do with the perimeter, and then the carpet has to do with the area, the amount of space um, in that figure. Okay, 22 is just like another one we did, so I'm going to leave that one for you all to do on your own. 23 is another sales tax problem. Um, this time it tells you the sales tax. Okay, and we're looking for the purchase price of the table before the tax. And so again, if we take our formula, sales tax equals the tax rate times the purchase price. This time they're telling me that the sales tax is 14.26. So I'm going to set up an equation equals the sales tax rate, again, change this to a decimal. So I would move that back two places to the left and get 0 0.062 times the purchase price. I don't know what the purchase price is, so I'm just going to call that x. So to solve for x now, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 .60 to 0 0.062. And when you divide 14.26, divided by 0 0.062, you get 230. So that's the purchase price. The purchase price would be $230. Okay, so that was before the taxes. So to get the total price, remember all we're gonna do is add the purchase price plus the sales tax. So if I add 230 plus 1426, I get $244 and 26 cents. In number 24, it says the ratio of the weight of an object on planet A to the weight of the same object on planet B is 100 to 3. If an elephant weighs 4,700 pounds on planet A, find the, elements, the elephant's weight on planet B. So we've got planet A, and ratio is just a fraction, right? We're comparing planet A to planet B. And it says that the ratio of the weights would be 100 to 3. So I'm going to set up a proportion now. It says if an elephant weighs 4,700 pounds on planet A, so planet A goes on the top, find the elephant's weight on planet B. So I don't know what the weight is. I'm going to put an X. Remember what we have here is what's called a proportion. And to solve a proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna multiply 100 times x, and then three times 4,700. And when I multiply three times 4,700, I get 14100. 
And then to solve for x, I'm just going to divide both sides by 100. And when I do that, I get 141. So an elephant that weighs 4,700 pounds on planet A would weigh 141 pounds on planet B. And remember, the symbol for pounds is LBS. And then the last problem I'm going to cover in this video is um, number 25. It says evaluate the expression for x equals negative 21 and y equals 441. Remember, all evaluate means to do is replace. So I'm going to take my expression, and I'm just going to replace these values into the expression. So it says x squared, so I'm going to put negative 21, and I'm going to square it. Okay, and make sure you put parentheses around anything you're substituting in. And then minus 441. So order of operations tells me I have to do powers, take care of exponents first. Negative 21 squared just means negative 21 times negative 21. And you get 441. Minus 441, which equals zero. Okay, part two of the video, um, it, part two, numbers 26 through the end, will be in um, another video. So please click on the other video to see the rest of the review.